Good morning, and welcome to Worship at the Bath Church, United Church of Christ in Bath, Ohio. I'm Jill Small, the interim senior pastor here, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to worship this morning. Today, because it is the Sunday closest to Veterans Day, we want to acknowledge all those who have served our country in uniform. We appreciate your service. You have helped to keep our freedoms available to us, and we're grateful for that. Following worship today, we will be having Zoom coffee hour. If you'd like to join us, the link for that was in this week's splash. If you didn't get the splash, you can look at our website, bathucc.org, find the splash there, and follow the link to coffee hour at 930. Finally today, as we exchange the peace of Christ, I hope that you will do that with those who are physically worshiping with you, but also that you'd take a moment to leave a text, a comment, or a tweet and exchange the peace of Christ and allow others to share that sign of peace with you. It is so important now as it is always. This is the day that God has made, so let us be glad and rejoice in it. Thanks for being here and again, welcome to worship. Good morning. My name is Ross Black and I'm your lay leader for this sunny day that we're having, this Indian summer that we're having in the midst of all of this pandemic and all of these other happenings in our world. Welcome to Bath Church, a Stephen Ministry congregation. As we celebrate the happiness in our lives and think about all the other things that are coming along in our world, join us today in our service. Join me in the call to worship. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Let us gather as God's people. Let us gather as God's own. God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. us, Holy One, to reflect your image and to share your peace. Fill us with the gifts of your Spirit so that we are ready to welcome the Christ into our lives today and every day. Amen and Amen. Please join me in exchanging the sign of peace with those in your presence and emotionally with those whom you love. Oh. 
first Bible reading for today comes from the 24th chapter of Joshua. There are several sections. Again, in reading the verses before and the chapters before, know that Joshua has spent the time dividing up the lands and the, dealing with all of the various tribes and meeting their demands. He feels that his time is nearing the end. In preparation, let us hear the hundredth psalm. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. This is the first through the third verses, and then the 14th through the 16th verses, and then the 20th, 22nd through the 24th verses of Joshua. And Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem, and called for the elders of Israel, and for their heads, and for their judges, and their officers, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwell on the other side of the flood in old time, even Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nacor, and they served other gods. And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood, and led him throughout all the lands of Canaan, and multiplied his seed, and gave him Isaac. Now therefore fear the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood, and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord, and, it se and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. And Joshua said unto the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen you the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Now therefore put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your heart into the Lord God of Israel. And the people said unto Joshua, Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and his voice we will obey the word of God, for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Good morning, Bath Church and Bath Church kids. Well, this Sunday is the Sunday closest to Veterans Day. So I wanted to give you some ideas of how you could thank a veteran. Now in my family, we have lots of veterans. My niece is a veteran. My two cousins are veterans. My middle brother is a veteran. My stepfather's a veteran. And both of my grandfathers were veterans of World War II. One was in this Pacific theater and the other stormed the beaches of Normandy. So veterans hold a dear place in my heart. So some ways that you can thank a veteran. First, talk to your family. Ask if they're, ask your, your folks or your caregivers if there's family members you have that are veterans. Ask if there's close friends you have that are veterans. Um, also in our family, one of our dearest friends is a veteran. Um, and so you can take this opportunity to thank them. And there's a couple of ways you can do that. You could send them a card that just says, hi, <laughs> thank you for your service. You could draw them a picture to go with that. There are some little flags that you can buy, you know, just little mini flags. And you could get one for every veteran you know, and you could put it in your yard. And say, thank you, veterans. You could find out if there is a family, someone you're close to, maybe a friend's family or a school family or a family at church who has a loved one who's deployed. And deployed means that they're overseas right now, so they're not able to be home with their family. And you could reach out to that family and let that family know that they're so loved and thank them for their sacrifice as their family is gone from them. And then maybe ask them where you could send a card or you could send a little care package to someone who's deployed right now. While we always wish for peace and we always wish for an end to wars and we always wish for ways to communicate that bring peace, our veterans are so important to us. Our military members are so important to us and we hold them in deep respect and love. So this week, take a little time to thank a veteran. We'll see you soon. And now join us in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Before we pray together our pastoral prayer, which is one of the great gifts of being a church, is to be able to pray in community. I wanted to share with you this amazing thought from the SALT Project. You may not know the name the SALT Project, but if you saw our Advent video last year, they're the people and the team who put that together. So this is their words about Veterans Day. It was originally Armistice Day, on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, the truce was declared that ended World War I, then known as the Great War and the war to end all wars. Imagine the stillness, the quiet that came from laying down weapons on both sides after years of grueling, bloody trench warfare. The United States Congress subsequently declared that the date should be commemorated with thanksgiving and prayer and exercises designed to perpetuate peace through goodwill and mutual understanding between nations. It of course was not the war to end all wars. And in 1954, it was renamed Veterans Day in order to honor veterans from all the wars, not just World War I. But the words of Congress still resonate as they do the holiday's origins in that great stillness, a day of thanksgiving for the service of veterans living and dead
with the service of caregivers, doctors and nurses and chaplains and mental health professionals and spouses and family members and friends who walk with veterans through the ravages of war, even after the bullets and bombs and missiles stop flying and for the days of peace that come at long last. A day of prayer for people of all faiths or no faith at all. A time of prayer, meditation, or reflection on the stillness of armistice so that the days of peace on earth increase and the days of war decrease. A day of exercise designed to perpetuate peace through goodwill and mutual understanding between nations for all of us to find ways large and small to build bridges across lines of difference, suspicion or hostility in our neighborhoods, our country and amongst the nations of the world to lay down our arms, to step into a new stillness together, to sing with our ancestors that we too will lay down our swords and shields down by the riverside and study war no more. So the next 101 years may be more peaceful than the last. It is my greatest wish today, dear God, that you bless all of those who have served our country, bless their families, bless them not only when they are called to war, but when they come home, bless them with care and kindness and loving. Gracious God, we also continue to pray for our world, for the world to find an answer to this virus that continues to keep us at home, even though we are brought together every week through the amazing technology that we've been gifted. We ask you to be with those who are happy with new life coming into the world and those who are grieving for losses, some of loved ones. And we often know that grief can be felt not just in losses of people, but losses of ways of life, of marriages, of relationships. We ask you to be with all of us in the good times and the bad. In your son's name we pray. Amen. As we come to this moment of offering, we always ask that you consider how God has blessed you with your time, talent, and treasure, and how you might give that back so that our church and our ministries can serve the world.
Holy God, we are so grateful for all that you have given to us for this day, for every day. We are grateful for these gifts. Bless them and help us to use them to give back to the people here in our church and outside our doors and in the world. Amen. Today, Jesus speaks to us in a parable found in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. Hear now the words of the evangelist. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, look, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the good news. Thanks be to God. Today, Joshua calls people to commitment. And in Matthew, Jesus tells a parable about being prepared. Both are very timely. Listen to the words of yet another writer, though, because I think we can learn something else from pondering his words today, too. Whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village, though he will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near, between the woods and the frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. He gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there's some mistake. The only other sound is the sweep of easy wind and downy flake. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. How do we pass the faith and hope and history and tradition and vision from one generation to the next? How do we prepare for what's next? We do so in part by telling and retelling the stories that have shaped us so far, as well as thinking about how we can prepare for what's next. Joshua was a political pundit, a military strategist, an economic guru, the ethical compass of his people, and he was a warrior. When the fighting ended and he neared the end of his life, like others before him and since, he called on his people to reflect about their past and their present and look forward to their future. In particular, he called on all the people to present themselves before God. When they did that and Joshua saw the crowd, I imagine that there were people gathered there whom Joshua had known for most of his life. Warriors who'd fought beside him, 
families whose fathers or sons had died in battle. People who had taken him in and dressed his wounds and given him food and a shelter and a place to rest and recoup for whatever was next for him. There were people who trusted him with their lives. And I would imagine that there were people who didn't like him or trust him much at all. And maybe as Joshua surveyed that crowd, he thought about Moses and that all the people there and he himself knew that he was no Moses. But he had taken up a mantle of leadership as a young man with hopes and fears and ideals and a vision to bring people together and to accomplish the goals that they held in common, to give them security, to put anger and division and prejudice aside and to make peace within and beyond borders. Now as a seasoned leader, nearing the end of his personal journey, Joshua would speak one last time and ask Israel to commit themselves to God as one people. Through Joshua, God says to Israel, I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. That had taken generations. And there they were in a promised land, remembering their history and looking forward to what might be next. All of this sets the stage for the point of the gathering. The past is prologue. Who shall we be now? That is a question that we too ask ourselves. Who shall we be now? Because the choice is ours and we make that choice again and again. Who shall I be in light of what God has done in my life? How shall I prepare to live as a witness to the divine in my world, in God's world? How do I prepare? How do I perhaps take that lesson from Matthew's gospel and think about being wise and having the tools at hand for what's coming next? Remember that Joshua took that land, that promised land from others. There's a reason it's called the conquest. And remember that Jesus lived in an occupied nation. And no matter how the ancients or we read about a promised land, really that land was not Israel's, nor the Palestinians, nor the Romans, nor the Turks, nor the French, nor the British. Whose woods these are? I think I know. They are God's woods. They are God's mountains. They are God's deserts. They are God's prairies. All the promised lands are God's. And we all have miles to go before we sleep, before we hand over what God has entrusted to us to another generation. Before we do that, we have to ask ourselves, who shall we be now? We cannot, we cannot step into the future by running from the past, nor by clinging to it. Our nation, every nation, has miles to go before we sleep, has challenges and opportunities ahead, and we must prepare. And that will take all of us, as it always has, and always will, and always should, all of us to dare to dream, to embrace renewed commitment, and to learn from our journey so far so that we are ready for the next step. That will help us prepare. That will help us do the godly thing as we move into the future. I shared some words from another writer at the beginning of today's meditation. Uh, perhaps the best known and most beloved of all America's poet laureates, Robert Frost. His own life was filled 
with great success and with deep sorrow. It was a paradox, as are most of our lives. And at the end of his life, like Joshua, Frost surveyed the landscape literally and figuratively that he had come to know and to love so well. And he said, in three words, I can sum up everything I've learned about life. It goes on. May the God who has brought us this far by faith continue to walk with each of us and with all of us to help us prepare for everything that is next as life goes on. Amen. And now may God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May God lift up the light of divine countenance upon us and give us peace. Amen. <laughs>